Mille grazie, Cristiano. Uh, buongiorno a tutti. Hello, everybody. So this, is talk, is, this talk is going to be in English. And uh, already I'm very happy to uh, see you here. And thank you for having chosen to be uh, um, the audience of my talk. It was a surprise for me uh, to be here today. A very beautiful, I feel very honored. And I am going to uh, share with you a part of my uh, personal WordPress journey. It is about how I became a WordPress community junkie. And first of all, I wanted to uh, have a look with you at my life back, how it was four years ago. So as Cristiano told you, um, I have been working um, as a government agent in Luxembourg. This is uh, the country I have been born and raised. I uh, live in the beautiful German Eiffel since four years now, together with my husband and our three dogs. And um, the life in Luxembourg, so the work life in Luxembourg, has been special for me. I mean, there are a lot of advantages of being uh, a government agent. And the advantages are a lot about security and materialism. So you have a very high income, you have a safe job, so um, there it isn't easy to fire you, in fact. So if you are good in your job or not, it doesn't make a, a big difference, which is also not a big challenge, to be honest. And um, you have guaranteed pensions and guaranteed health insurances, which are good and important things. But on the other hand, I felt that I had no professional goals and there was no challenge in my job. And in the, in the early morning, I didn't know why to get up and go to work because it wasn't something meanif meaningful I was doing. And um, after 12 years of being a government agent, I really struggled with severe mental health problems. I dealt with um, a lot of frustration and lethargy and um, I really had um, depressive episodes at that point. And, but I felt that I, I, I had to do that because of course, I, I liked to be in this secure situation, but in the end, I realized, so who needs security? People with a lot of fears. And I didn't want to be in that golden cage anymore. So I decided that it was about time to change my life and to stop this. So what I did, um, I went on a four-year sabbatical, which is something you can do in Luxembourg when you're working for the government. And um, my husband, he was uh, also fed up with his job at that point. And we decided to um, leave Luxembourg to sell our, all our belongings and to move to the German Eiffel. And unfortunately, the decision to change the life I was leading at that point didn't solve all of my problems. To be honest, I fell into a deep hole first. So the, the depressive episodes I had went worse in the beginning. And um, I struggled with severe overweight. And uh, the lethargy got even worse because I didn't have any professional goals. I didn't have any personal goals. I just decided that I had to change my life, but I had no clue how. And um, I had several orthopedic complaints, which went together with the overweight I had at that point. And in 2015, I got diagnosed um, with lipedema. Lipedema is basically a chronic progressive disease, which is a fat disorder, which is very painful, and which almost exclusively affects women. And because I, I mean, I was suffering of this disease probably during 20 years already without knowing it, and because I didn't know, and there were changes in my body which I was not able to understand, I developed um, severe eating disorders already in my early teenage years. So I was, and I am still, married to uh, a WordPress developer. He's a software engineer and he chose uh, WordPress as uh, the platform of his choice. And he had a plan B. He wanted to be a developer and uh, he worked on his career. So fortunately, one of us had a plan, <laughs> but I didn't have any clue at that point what WordPress was. And I had no interest in uh, changing that because I am not a technical person. I'm still not a technical person. And uh, I wasn't involved with WordPress. And this was kind of 
different for our relationship at that point, uh, difficult, not different, difficult for our relationship at that point, because I was kind of locked out of the life that my husband was leading every day. And we had fewer uh, um, common points of interest and also conversations were uh, uh, a bit difficult because we spent a lot of time together in our house, but I wasn't involved in what he was doing every day. So he, he asked me at one point if I would like to join him to a so-called word camp. And uh, that word camp uh, was word camp Europe 2016 in Vienna. And it was very hard for him to convince me because the idea to be with, I am sorry, 2000 nerds <laughs> and me <laughs> and like, what am I doing there? And nobody's going to talk to me. And do you know Big Bang Theory? Like, here comes Penny and I have no clue of what you're talking about. That wasn't easy for me. But in the end, I tried, uh, I, I, I just agreed and in joining him to that trip. And what I experienced in Vienna was totally different. I had so many fears of being excluded on site and that nobody's going to talk to me. And this is just not what happened. I found so many inspiring people over there and I made new friends. And I, I remember that before we went to Vienna, I told my husband like, oh, we are not going to spend a whole week with these people. I mean, maybe during the conference, but the rest we are going to stay in our, in, in our couple because I was really afraid. But already on the first evening, I met so many cool people that I started connecting with face on Facebook with them and uh, making plans for the next day. So our whole week was, pr was planned in one evening and it was me making plans with the people. There were 2,500 people at this WordCamp in Vienna, which was, if I'm not mistaken, the biggest WordCamp ever. And nobody made me feel uncomfortable. And it was a real broadening of horizon. And I truly felt that I wanted to be part of this community, which was so welcoming and inclusive. And I have never had an experience like this before in my life. So when we came home back from Vienna, I had kind of withdrawal syndromes, like I want to be with this community a bit more. And my husband told me that there is a website called WordCamp Central where you can check whether there are other WordCamps around in your area. And this might be something he probably regrets by now because I started immediately signing us up for upcoming WordCamps and signing us up for volunteers because uh, I felt like having um, a task, a job uh, on the WordCamp would even help me to feel more involved because I didn't plan to attend any sessions because in my head, sessions were only for hardcore coders and developers, uh, which is not me. So the first WordCamp we attended uh, was uh, uh, WordCamp Frankfurt in Germany in 2016. And I helped at the registration desk, which is awesome to meet people because you are welcoming the attendees, and um, this was really cool to connect. And uh, we even took our dogs there, so this was the, fir the first word came, our dogs went with us, and we were really um, included into the WordPress community of Germany by the first second. And so this was like a confirmation for me that it was not only WordCamp Vienna, but there are other communities around which are as welcoming as uh, what I experienced in Vienna. The next WordCamp we attended was uh, WordCamp the Netherlands in 2016 in Utrecht. And uh, th there I had uh, an aha moment. I don't know if this is an expression you say in English, but it was like another broadening of uh, horizon because I uh, attended the, the, um, the opening remarks, but still I hadn't attended any real session in Frankfurt. So I went to the opening remarks because I wanted to be polite. And then there hasn't been any break between the opening remarks, and the keynote. So I was locked in this room and I couldn't leave for not being sitting in a session because it would just be impolite. And so I had to be in my first session, so it was not something I chose. It was something I got forced in. And the speaker was Marike van der Racht from Joost and she was giving um, an SEO talk. And I realized, hey, I am able to understand something and it's interesting and I learned something here. And it was totally inspiring, and it encouraged me to um, attend another session that day, which was by Sally Mayer from the UK, and she was giving a talk called How WordPress Saved My Life. 
And that was another big broadening of horizon because I realized that um, there is something like remote work, which I didn't know as a government worker before, and that um, the most important message was that WordPress gives you the opportunity to raise your voice. And no matter who you are or wherever you, uh, you're located, and yeah, this was inspiring, and I will tell you later what I did with this inspiration. The next WordCamp we attended was again in Germany. It was WordCamp Cologne. And what was special about this WordCamp for me is that it was the first contributor day uh, I attended. Uh, because again, in my head, I thought that contributor days would be for coders only and that I would be completely useless there. And so the, um, um, the organizers and other attendees tried to convince me during the WordCamp to attend the contributor day, which happened after the actual WordCamp. And um, yeah, I went there and uh, tried to overcome my fears and I joined the polyglots table and at the end of the day I had localized one free theme into German and it even got committed the same day, which was kind of an amazing feeling of uh, having been useful. And I also joined the discussions for creating and organizing a new type of WordCamp, which is about to happen in one month. It is called WordCamp Retreat in Soltau in Germany. And this was my first step of becoming a WordCamp organizer myself. We attended many WordCamps after this one. So it would take me like, I don't know, five hours to give you an impression from every WordCamp I attended and which I loved. Uh, there's one example I wanted to share here with you. It's WordCamp London last year in uh, 2017 and it's going to happen again in one week. I'm going to be there. And WordCamp London was for me an outstanding example of uh, uh, inclusion and accessibility. And I truly hope that I ca can have myself an impact on future WordCamps following the example of the organizers of WordCamp London. And this is also where I bought my purple hat. And uh, so since then, every WordCamp I attend, I have my purple hat. As you can see here, I changed um, a lot in my life in the last two years. I decided that it, wa it was about time to take care of myself, to take care of my mental health, to, ca to take care of my physical health. And I decided that I was worth it. And so there's a considerable weight loss of 70 pounds. I started my lipedema therapy, which is not an easy thing to do because it means that you have to wear tight compression garments every day and going to uh, lymphatic drainage like two, twice or three times a week. And I went through uh, three very painful surgeries, but it was all worth it. I'm, I'm feeling better now. And I am uh, not the same person anymore, not from the inside and not from the outside. And I uh, totally changed my life. And now I have new personal goals. I have new professional goals. And I discovered a new lifestyle, like digital nomad lifestyle, partly remote work. And also my creativity came back. Or I don't know if coming back is the right expression, because I don't know if I had any real crea creative episode before in my life. So what did I achieve besides attending WordCamps? <laughs> and how did I use the inspiration I got from the community? I founded a non-profit organization in Luxembourg together with um, other lipedema affected women. And at that point, the therapy wasn't uh, covered in Luxembourg. And um, as I experienced myself, it was very hard to get a diagnose. And I, I wasn't diagnosed for two decades. And I wanted to change that for affected women in my home country. So I created a WordPress website with almost no skills in a very short amount of time, which confirmed what I learned in Sally Mayer's talk, like WordPress gives you the opportunity to raise your voice. And we had an enormous reach and we got enormous feedback. And we had, have, we had had several uh, appearances on national TV. I gave a lot of interviews. We uh, have been in local newspapers. And suddenly things began to change uh, in Luxembourg. So um, I was in contact with the health ministers and in less than a year, 
now the therapy is covered in Luxembourg. And when I started um, to become active, therapy was better in Germany than it was in Luxembourg, and now it's the opposite. So in less than one year, everything changed in Luxembourg for lipedema-affected women. And we created um, a campaign, a lipedema awareness campaign, where um, I was also one uh, of the models, but most important, I did all the design for it, and I didn't even know that I had any designer skills, and all the typography, and it was a lot of work because I had to have, uh, I had to, to disco discover and develop those skills, but it was so fulfilling, and I never felt this kind of fulfillment in my job that I had before. In 12 years, I never had that fulfillment, and this is nothing I, I earned money with. And it was just a great feeling to do something good and to discover creativity. Talking about creativity, um, this is one of my dogs, which uh, sometimes uh, uh, comes with us to WordCamps. And the German WordPress community uh, gave me the input that I should create with a poo, uh, with the characteristics of a French bulldog. And <laughs> <laughs> so. I didn't know that I had designer skills, as I told you before, and I was like, oh yeah, somebody should do that. I should find a designer who is doing that. And then my husband told me, like, oh, why don't you try it yourself? And I was like, but I can't. I mean, I, I just can't. And then he told me, like, why don't you try? Yeah, and then I think it, was, it took me two or three hours to have the result. I'm very proud of it, and it's super cute. And uh, then when I, when, I was discover, uh, when I was recovering from uh, my surgeries, I even started crocheting and I made this uh, uh, cute um, crocheted version of uh, the Vabuli. I have stickers here, so uh, later on you can find me and I can give you some of these cute stickers. Um, I got contacted earlier last year by Tofa de Rosia, who is um, the founder of HeroPress, which is an awesome project where WordPress people from all over the world share their stories and try to inspire other people. And he contacted me to ask if I could uh, write an essay for Hero Press. And I just felt like super honored because I didn't know that I had something to share at that point. And I admired all the essays I have read before from other people at Hero Press. And of course I said yes. And then I started to write down my story. And I got heartwarming feedback. And this was the point that I realized that I could maybe be capable of inspiring other people in this community. And this was the inspiration for this talk, actually. Um, in the meantime, uh, I have become a WordCamp organizer and meetup organizer myself. So I'm involved in the organization of three different WordCamps. Um, there's WordCamp Cologne, which happened last year in November. There's WordCamp Retreat, which is going to happen in a month. And um, I am a proud member of the organizing team of WordCamp Europe in Belgrade this year. I'm on the volunteers team. And uh, I am also a co-organizer together with my husband and uh, the amazing Birgit Olsen from Germany of the tiny uh, but awesome uh, uh, meet uh, WordPress meetup uh, Eiffel. And as you can see, in the meantime, I have become uh, a WordCamp speaker as well, which I couldn't have imagined like one year before that this could be possible. And the first talk I gave was at WordCamp Berlin in Germany. And I have this amazing souvenir from uh, Anja Gross, who made sketch notes and she chose the right color to illustrate it. And this is how she experienced my very first talk. And it was an awesome experience, and it was very, very emotional for me and also from, from, for some people in the audience. And uh, so I decided that I could share my story and spread it a bit more at WordCamp. And I was talking uh, at WordCamp Utrecht last year and we're in WordCamp Miami three weeks ago, and now I'm here. So uh, another big turning point in my life was again WordCamp Europe last year uh, in lovely Paris, mainly for two reasons. First reason is um, I got asked by Francesca Marano if I would like to become an MC. And I haven't been on stage before. And I was just freaking out when she asked me, like, well, oh my gosh, there are going to be like 2,000 people and I have to be on stage and, and, and introduce speakers and do all that in English, which is not my mother tongue, and oh, I'm going to die. And again, I had so many fears. But uh, then I decided to overcome these fears and to give it a try and to seize the opportunity. And in the end, I was freaking out every time I went on stage. Like, I had to go 22 times on stage. I counted them. And, but on stage, I managed to keep my cool, and it was an awesome experience. 
so as you can see, I struggle a lot with imposter syndrome, <laughs> which is probably something you might know. Um, and there was one very important sentence, a very nice person told me just the evening before going on stage the first time. She told me, you don't have to be afraid. We are the WordPress community and we want you to succeed. And that helped me so much because that's true. I mean, I haven't met any person in this community who just wanted to see anybody fail somewhere. And that really helped me to keep my cool. I decided when I uh, accepted to become an MC for WordCamp Europe that I wanted to add value to the conference and I wanted to add value to the speakers. And that's why I created a special MC form where um, I was asking the speakers to provide me with some information, professional and personal information about them to allow me to uh, prepare a proper introduction. And um, this form is in the meantime, has in the meantime become mandatory for several WordCamps around the world, which I'm very proud of because um, it showed me that new ideas are welcomed and that um, they saw the value in it. So the other big turning point at WordCamp Europe was that I am now a WordPress professional in some way because I met for the second time the crew from Plus. Plask is a web ops hosting and server management platform and I met uh, the crew the first time at WordCamp Berlin and we had a, a lot of fun. And they uh, approached me in Paris and told me that they were looking for a so-called WordPress community manager and asked me if I would be interested in doing that job. And I felt super honored, but for me it was totally clear that I'm not going to accept that because I will not be able to do that and it's too early for me. And Imposter syndrome struggled. Uh, I struggled with imposter syndrome again. And uh, yeah, so I had some discussions later on with my husband again. And then he told me, why don't you just let these guys decide if you are capable of doing this or not? And then I decided to give it a try because I achieved so much other things I didn't know I was capable for in the years before. So why, don't, why just don't give it a try? And so since August last year, I am the WordPress community manager for Plask, and uh, it allows me to even travel more, to be more with the WordPress community I love, and um, to create win-win situations. So Plask is sponsoring a lot of WordCamp and allows me to, uh, um, to contribute a considerable amount of my uh, working time to the WordPress project. And uh, on the other hand, Plask gets valuable feedback from the community because they strive to uh, uh, get even better in what they do. And uh, so they get uh, feedback of the needs of the community. So this is, a, this is a, a recap of the WordCamps I attended in 2017 and uh, which I am attending in 2018. And it's even not all. I think there's at least two WordCamps missing. <laughs> and um, so I am really traveling a lot. And it is something I love because I love to meet people, I love to meet new people. And uh, so this is a small impression of what I experienced last year. Um, I told you that I'm a WordCamp organizer now myself. So the first WordCamp that happened, which I was an organizer of, was WordCamp Cologne again, last year in 2017. And I got surprised on stage uh, after the opening remarks by the, by the German WordPress community who had created um, a Vapu with obviously some characteristics of mine. <laughs> and they, it was really, I busted into tears. It was so heartwarming and sweet. And uh, they called it like uh, the Vapu for the uh, community newcomer of the year. So it was really, really, really nice. And my husband made me one uh, month ago the most awesome birthday present because we are huge Lego fans. And uh, so this was my birthday present one month ago. So he did a pixel, created a pixel version of this Vapu and uh, he built together the set and uh, offered it. And so we were building this in uh, like two or three hours and it was really amazing. In the past 25 minutes, I was talking a lot about fears. And I think this is a very important message I want to share with you. Everything you want lies on the other side of fear. Uh, the key for success is 
just overcome your fears and try new things and don't be afraid of changes in your life. If you're stuck in a situation that makes you unhappy, try to change it. And it is not an easy thing to do, especially when you are a control freak. And I am a control freak. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Who's a control freak in here? <laughs> there are some. And who is struggling with imposter syndrome? Even more people. I see you. So it is not an easy thing to do, but it is worth it. My relationship with my husband also changed during the last years, because now we have more common topic of interest. We found new friends together. We are allowed to travel the world together. And something that was a problem is now a new common strength. We are supportive to, to, uh, supportive to each other. We are proud of each other. And uh, so this is a very sweet tweet that uh, my husband uh, was posting uh, at WordCamp Frankfurt. And if there's a call to action I can do today, it would be bring your partners, friends, and family to WordCamps because amazing things can happen just like it did for me. And I am not the only example. There are other people, even in this room, <laughs> who allowed me to share um, their story. And the uh, first example is uh, Dennis, who's sitting in the first row, and his daughter, Sammy. And uh, she got involved into WordPress by volunteering. And um, in fact, she was the speaker wrangler my first time uh, that I was speaking at a WordCamp in Berlin. And she helped me a lot. She was the friendly face I was allowed to look at in the first row. And she's just an awesome person, and I'm still in a good contact with her. And she's volunteering um, at a lot of word camps. Well, she, I mean, she's traveling a lot, so if she has the occasion to be a volunteer. Even here in Italy, she did it sometimes, in Milano, I think. Uh, she's adding a lot of value to conferences. We have Kate and Topher de Roja. So Topher is the founder of HeroPress, as I told you before. And uh, his wife, Kate, is not a technical person. And she wanted to become a farmer when she was younger. And then she married a developer. <laughs> so s she was joining Topher to uh, WordPress conferences over 20 years. Uh, and she fell in love with this community. And in the meantime, she's a WordCamp organizer and speaker herself. She was the lead organizer for WordCamp Grand Rapids last year. And they also take their daughters occasionally to WordCamps. And they make friends there, like their parents make friends there. And most important, they learn at a very young age about the business opportunities that WordPress creates, which is so valuable and which is something you probably don't learn easily at school. We have Diane Wallace and uh, Mick Scarlett. Uh, Diane is a designer and she dragged her husband Mick like kicking and screaming to his first WordCamp because he also thought that it was not the right place for him to be. And in the meantime, uh, he is um, doing amazing talks about accessibility and inclusion at WordCamps all around the UK and uh, adds value to a lot of WordCamps. We have uh, Laura Byrne and uh, Kevin Cristiano. Kevin is a, um, a WordPress deputy. He's involved in the community team. But he got involved into WordPress because of his wife, Laura, because she had a WordPress website um, that has over 100,000 visitors back in 2007. And Kevin wanted to help her manage the website. And then he found the WordPress community. And Laura didn't join the community uh, until 2015. Uh, when she was attending a her, her first WordCamp, and she got caught by the community bug immediately, like me. And in the meantime, she's a WordCamp speaker and organizer herself. We have Mark Benzakane, who is uh, from the United States, and he occasionally takes his kids to WordCamps. And he wrote uh, an amazing blog post about how about why he is taking his kids to WordCamps. And I want to cite a quote from this blog post. I want to show my kids that the land of community, both professionally and personally, does exist. And that no matter what they pursue as they get older, they should always seek out communities that are supportive and realize that they need to be equally supportive of the people and communities around them. 
We have uh, Manuela van Vrooyen and her daughter Kristen. Manuela was one of the lead organizers last year at WordCamp Utrecht in the Netherlands. And uh, I love this picture on the right because it shows uh, Manuela um, doing some lead organizing stuff together with her lovely daughter Kristen who was volunteering and helping her mother to create uh, a great event. And last but not least, we have the lovely Yvette Sonnefeld, also from the Netherlands, um, who has also a, pr a, a very interesting uh, story, WordPress story, because four years ago, she was looking for a way to overcome imposter syndrome. And uh, she was living in the United States at that point, and she signed up for uh, WordCamp Miami. But as soon as she signed up, she got in total panic zone, because there will be so, m so many new people she haven't met before. And then the call for volunteers uh, came out for WordCamp Miami. And she thought like maybe it could be helpful to be on a concrete task and have something concrete to do. And so she wouldn't, she would, it would allow her to come out of her panic zone and that's what she did. And focusing on the joint goal allows her to um, make, uh, to uh, shift away from the anxiety she had to deal with and to make uh, real connections. And uh, volunteering and contributing at WordCamps helped grow her self-confidence to uh, a, a most, uh, to, to much more healthier level. And I met her son Julian at WordCamp Nijmegen last year. And Julian is uh, kind of an introverted person. And Yvette thought that her son could use a boost and uh, uh, profit from the welcoming atmosphere at WordCamps. And that's what happened. And uh, I talked to Julian and he told me that he was so surprised of the welcoming and helpful atmosphere and that everybody around him just tried to help him to uh, make useful contributions and if somebody around didn't know the answer to his question, they would immediately start finding somebody that knew the answer and this is something he unfortunately doesn't experience at school. So we're coming to uh, the end of this talk and um, I mean, I still don't know exactly where my journey is going to take me in the end, but I am super happy that I had the courage to chose to um, stop the life which was making me unhappy and to go for a new challenge. So thank you WordPress community for having me on board and for helping me to build a better life. Thank you, Carol, very, very much. Your, your story is uh, very amazing. So, any question? Any question in the room? Oh, please, you have to come here because we are all, all fashion style. With the Hi, uh, thanks. It was a great, great talk. Um, you've been dragged, screaming and kicking to your first work camp. Do you have, in retrospective, any idea of how I could do the same with someone I love? Like, any trick that I could use? Any, any good pitch? I, I think it could be um, helpful to show. Uh, so is it is it for uh, f f who are we talking about? For your girlfriend? Yeah, I think it could be helpful to show her my talk, <laughs> like because uh, um, I I always try to um, convince uh, people like personally, and I I had I had several occasions to meet uh, partners or um, uh, friends of WordPress people at. Um, after events, so I didn't have the courage to come to the actual event, and uh, I managed to uh, convince them to come. But yeah, probably I think that you you have already all the arguments you need. Like um, it is a welcoming community, and it can change lives. So I think it could be helpful to show this talk, and um, to there are other similar talks who are really community talks and who help people to change their lives. And yeah, just 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 tell her to give it a try. And if she doesn't like it, which is not going to happen, then she doesn't have it to have to do it again. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Uh, other question? Any other question? Oh, okay. Hey, Carol. This is um, this is actually a request uh, wrapped in a question. <laughs> Can you please never stop doing this? Can you please always keep giving this talk because it's so inspiring and 
and it's it's honestly just one of the most inspiring and um, encouraging talks I've ever seen at WordCamp. So, no, 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 no. <laughs> just please keep doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Can I give you? Thank, thank you again very, very much. I, I totally agree 100% with, with you. OK, so any other question? Oh. Hi. It's also not a question. I just wanted to say how much I relate to this talk and my own journey. And I just cried watching your talk. And I just want a hug. <laughs> I'm also now in among a World Camp organizer, and really, I agree totally. It changed your life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. I I met Patricia's family yesterday at um, the volunteer speaker pre-event, and uh, yeah, we, we talked about that. And I'm really looking forward to see your husband and kiddies this afternoon because they told us to come. So this is another example. Patricia's bringing her family to World Camp. <laughs> Exactly, perfect. So, any other question? Time is, uh, sorry, time is over. You have to uh, change. So, thank you, thank you again, Carol. Thank you, <laughs> okay.